All right, so we're going to move on to our uh, third talk. Uh, is, is Professor Yen uh, here? Ah, I see, I see Professor Yen here. Okay, so while Professor Yen is setting up, I'm going to introduce him. Uh, so our third talk will be given by Professor uh, Jun Si Yen, uh, who is currently an associate professor with the Department of Computer Science and, and Engineering at the Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Professor Yen's uh, research interests are machine learning, combinatorial optimization, and computer vision. He's uh, leading a national key research and development project on machine learning for combinatorial optimization and an NSFC, Outstanding Young Talent Program on Graph Computing. So the, let's welcome Professor Yen. Uh, thanks, thanks for your host, and uh, I'm very pleased to have the chance to uh, introduce my work, uh, in recent works on combinatorial optimization by machine learning. And uh, uh, my talk will mostly cover about some machine learning uh, data-driven approaches. Okay, uh, this is my team, who is the main contributor for today's presentation. They are my postgraduate students. And this is my um, homepage with some uh, open source on the GitHub. So you can check out all the source codes for our uh, for my today's talk from my GitHub. And so. Firstly, I will give some uh, background introduction. Uh, so uh, in terms of combinatorial optimization, just uh, Professor Bias said, we have many applications and many um, interesting uh, um, problems. And uh, for example, like graph matching, we have almost uh, 50 years research in this uh, specific specific problem, which is a bit hard in general. And uh, we can also find some uh, interesting applications in um, uh, EDA for electronic design, and also, in, on the other hand, many classic uh, graph problems can be uh, converted to some standard uh, uh, problems like MIP. Uh, sorry, my where is my? Where Maybe is my? we share again. Uh, okay, okay. Just yeah, uh, look at the screen sharing. Is okay, can, can you see my, see my slide? Yeah, now it's good. Now it's okay, good. great. Yeah, so um, I mean, many uh, classic and specific graph problems can be converted into like mixture integer programming, and uh, many commercial solvers can solve it effectively. And uh, so we have seen many um, commercial companies in these areas, which is uh, we think traditional uh, solvers for uh, operational research or also combinatorial optimization. Uh, but today I will talk more about machine learning and broadly speaking AI for the uh, for the uh, move for the push for the frontier of the uh, combined neutralization. So in this figure you see uh, the X axis is about the domain for from continuous variables to discrete ones like many combined neutral problems discrete. The uh, the Y axis is about the constraint so uh, from unconstrained problems into constrained problems. And we see like deep learning, which heavily use the gradient descent and uh, mostly try to solve the perception problems like face recognition, like image classification, but they are not constrained. But for combinatorial problems and many graph problems, they are constrained and uh, in the discrete space. So we see maybe we need some uh, new uh, fresh air to rethink about the AI technology from those continuous and unconstrained domain into the discrete and the constrained domain. So um, we try to uh, relook at the classic uh, deep uh, learning. Again, I think your, your screen sharing is, is again uh, down. OK, let me. Yeah. Could you see that? Uh, okay, okay, no, it's good. Thank you. Uh, so, so we, we, we look at uh, the perception problems, many like image classification, object detection, or speech recognition. So they are uh, more about using the input matrix or sequence and the, in the continuous domain without constraint. So we have many like CN, RN, LSTM, even transformer. So we think they are more uh, regular neural networks. but. Uh, so I drop out again. Uh, let me uh, find the reason. Because I use a VPN, first let me drop the VPN and uh, reconnect. 
OK, so. Um, so on the other hand, these are about the graph problems like combinatorials. Uh, so uh, they typically have the input graph structure and uh, they also have the additional constraint constraints. So for example, the point network, which is about uh, seven years ago, about the, the, from the Google. So they designed a specific network architecture, try to encode the constraint into their network architectures. So for the output, they point back to the input sequence. So the problem constraint is about the output must be the subset of the input sequence. So they design such a specific architecture to encode such constraints. So um, let me give a more broad overview about machine learning for combined tutorial optimization. So I here give three examples. One is about this year's uh, CVPRVS paper. It's about learning to solve hard minimal problems. And uh, the other example is about uh, Yushu Banjo just uh, published a first author survey on machine learning for combinatorial optimization. And uh, also uh, USA NSF just makes 20 million investment on uh, optimization for uh, AI. So they have the Insti AI Institute for advanced in optimization. So the leading uh, organization is uh, GATEC and uh, the the member is about CMU, so because this, this is lies in the intersection between AI and uh, um, operation research. So from my personal view, I think so for this so era of big data or era of uh, AI, we have a more open uh, uh, world. We, we need to end to end to solve the problem. But traditionally, many measurement science problems just uh, is based on some assumption or based on the given uh, data like the the forecasting numbers, like the the boundary condition. But in many uh, real world problems, even we don't have such uh, inputs. So we need to uh, solve the problem from scratch. We need to build up our uh, forecasting system. We need to build up our uh, perception system. And then, unfortunately, many of such successful uh, modernized components are based on machine learning. So it's natural to think about how can we um, streamline the existing backend solvers also by machine learning. Then we have a bridge like machine learning to bridge the front end perception forecasting with the back end problem solving. So that's the, the main um, vision of my research, try to establish such a end to end system. So uh, I will also introduce some uh, my work. Uh, so one is about graph matching, which is actually my PhD thesis. And uh, I, I finished my thesis using the traditional uh, approximate uh, solvers or algorithms because this is in general a bit hard. And uh, we will also talk about uh, other aspects for the machine learning solvers. Um, so first we jump into the very specific uh, problem about graph matching. So given two graphs, we have five nodes. Here is four nodes. Um, we try to establish their node correspondence from node one to node A and then node five to node C. So basically we can use the X matrix. This is a permutation matrix to, to, to denote the solution, the, the output. And this is a binary matrix with constraints in terms of its rows and its columns. We have the, the matching constraint. And also we can um, prepare a, Affinity matrix K, which is the on the diagonal is is a node affinities, on the off diagonal it's about edge affinity. So uh, assume this affinity information is given, we try to solve this uh, quadratic assignment problem, which is a bit hard in general. So in many uh, applications like computer vision, we try to uh, match two images and based on the key points, which can be extracted and uh, described the, by some features like a sift feature, which is meant, uh, handcrafted. And then we computed the edge and the node similarity to obtain the K, and then we solve the problem by some approximate algorithms. But now we try to um, change the, the rule of the game. So we need, we try to use first use the CN deep neural nets to extract the features, which can be more effective for the matching problem. Because the SIFT feature is handcrafted, maybe it's not optimal for the problem of, for the data at hand. 
the other thing is about we can also not only using the uh, image classification based uh, pre trained the CNN like um, Google Net or ResNet uh, because we need to train the CNN based on the specific task about matching. This, that's not about classification, they're different. And the other thing is about uh, we, in overview, we try to establish an end to end pipeline to get the matching. So the challenge is how to um, handle the higher order information because we have the graph, we have the MP hot problem, and uh, if we solve the problem in the pipeline, uh, we, unfortunately, we have to get a um, non optimal, non global optimal solution. So, like using the um, spectral matching, whatever. But the problem is, if on the in the pipeline we have a non optimal solution and we get the loss, and we try to uh, retrain to update our uh, perception model like CNN parameters, that's helpful because even we have a very well trained CNN, but the solver like the spectral matching give you a better solution, then the loss will be high and then you will wrongly to retrain the model. Even this is, is a good feature, right? So the key is how we, can we um, solve the matching problem uh, effectively uh, in our pipeline. So the idea is try to reduce the order of the problem from second order uh, into the linear order because linear assignment is a is a optimal we can have an optimal solution by a uh, Hungarian algorithm or like using the single home uh, operators. So that means we first using the message passing to embed the higher order structure information uh, into node embedding. So then the problem becomes easier into a linear assignment problem. And then we just use the single home to do um, uh, to, to the column wise and the row wise uh, normalization, which will eventually converge into a double stochastic uh, matrix. So uh, that's our main idea. Try to um, reformulate the problem into a, an end to end uh, a pipeline for forward computing, and then we the, the single horn layer can also afford the, the background, uh, the gradient back propagation. Uh, even itself has no parameters to train, right? But this is a this is a, a layer. Uh, so this is our key idea about uh, neuralize the graph matching solver. So so in terms of the single horn, we know we try to by column and by row to alternatively. Uh, converge it into the double stochastic matrix, which means the row sum of the row comes to one, uh, also holds for the the column. And uh, what's the advantage of such uh, representation? So we find that the ground truth is about the permutation matrix, the binary one. And uh, we when we look at each row, it's like a sample, and each column is like a label. So it's like uh, we have uh, a four class. Uh, classification problem. We have four categories. So this is uh, like the softmax output, and this is uh, like the ground truth. So we can use a cross entropy loss to train our model. Uh, so that's the whole story about how we neuralize the graph matching problem into an pipe end to end pipeline. And also we um, the, the advantage. One thing is that we can streamline the whole pipeline to both uh, uh, train the best. Uh, feature extraction model, and also we can train the best node embedding model for GNN. And the other thing is about this is a one shot model. It's just have one, one for all the paths to get the result. If there is no loop in, in inference, so it can be very efficient. And uh, um, so we, this is our ICCB uh, 19 work. It's an oral paper, and we also compare the CBPI uh, 18. Best paper candidate. This is a best paper honorable mention paper. It's also about deep learning of graph matching, and we have the performance gain from uh, 55 to uh, 63, and we also shows good generalization ability across different problem instances. Uh, due to speed, time speed uh, limit, I have to quickly go through some other works. Um, so this is another uh, follow up works try to improve the performance. The one thing is about to introduce a new edge embedding uh, techniques beyond the node embedding because we have a graph, we have the edge information. So we, we would better to extract the information more effectively. The other thing is about the the, the training. We know we're using the um, the single home uh, normalization, which ends up to is a 
uh, double stochastic continuous one, continuous prediction. But in inference, eventually we need a, a discrete matching, a permutation. So there is a gap between the training and the inference. So, so in our strategy, we try to discretize the, the prediction. So we're using some Hungarian or attention mechanism to encourage the prediction more discrete in training. That will better align the inference with what we want is a discrete solution. Then uh, this mechanism will uh, hurt the performance in training accuracy, but it will be better in test phase. So, so this is our iClear uh, 20 work. And we also have a follow up works to do more generalized uh, graph matching, which in general is a QVP. As we said, X, uh, KX, this is a QVP problem. Even we can have no explicit input graphs. Because in many privacy concerned uh, cases, the, the solver may cannot uh, obtain the raw graph, which may be very private. But maybe we can get the pairwise uh, affinity between two parties. That uh, will be more acceptable. So we directly work on the uh, affinity matrix instead of the raw uh, graph. And the, the thing become more like a decision making problem instead of uh, uh, extraction, uh, feature extraction, because we have no images at all. We just only have the K affinity matrix. Uh, so uh, we also uh, adopt the, the GNN to do node embedding under the constraint. And also we extend our extend our work about to consider about the hypergraph because in hypergraph we have more than two nodes like this hyper edge this is a three order hyper edge so we also extend our work into the hypergraph matching and we get better and better results this is our tpami work and uh, interesting we also perform some experiments on the qep lib this is an open benchmark um so we compares the running time in log, log time, in log space. So note that it's not linear. Also, we compare the loss or the accuracy. The lawyers are better. So uh, our method performs the best compared with the Groovy commercial solver, as well as compared with the uh, classic solvers in recent uh, papers. And uh, also we have a speed up. Compared with Groovy, we have 400 times speed up. And, uh, 1,600 uh, 1, speed up compares the sort of method because we using uh, we our approach afforded us to use the GPU, but for many uh, like a Groovy, they cannot be compatible to GPU and they have to work on the CPU. That's the main reason for our acceleration. And the other thing is about our solver is a one shot. We have no auto regressive. We do, we do not solve the problem node by node. We just solve it in one shot. That's also be very efficient. Um, and we also have some extensions in terms of the self supervised learning. Uh, our previous work is about supervised learning. So the people have to, um, at least for the graph matching problem, is self uh, is supervised. We have to label the nodal correspondence. So here we try to using the idea about the contrastive learning, big model, pre-train, and the fine tune to adopt such a methodology into our specific task about graph matching. So we have to come up with new and effective way of uh, data augmentation in both image play and also in the graph domain. So as we know for contrast learning in graph, that will be very tricky because different tasks, different uh, data sets, we will have um, can be very sensitive to the setting of the augmentation strategy and the hyperparameters. So for the specific graph matching problems, we design our own uh, graph augmentation uh, strategy and the techniques to make it more robust and uh, uh, effective for training. And uh, we also get a very promising and even close to the supervised setting uh, matching uh, accuracy. We also um, think about when the given two graphs are different, because graph matching assumes the graphs are very similar, so they can be matched. But in general, we have totally different graphs. So the problem is how can we measure the distance between these two graphs? So one classic approach is about graph added distance. Unfortunately, it is also NP hard. So we just uh, uh, work under the uh, classic A star uh, 
algorithm framework, we have a GP uh, for the existing matched parts and the, the HP for the unmatched parts. So the key idea is that we just uh, replace the HP part from the traditional uh, computing solvers with our uh, uh, prediction neural networks. That makes the whole process more efficient, and uh, we can also have a very competitive final performance in terms of the uh, accuracy. So this is our CVPR 21 work with also codes has been published here in this QR code. And uh, we also do something to make our framework more general. Uh, because the previous works focus on the graph matching or uh, GED problem. Here we try to establish a general framework for combinatorial optimization. So the idea is that we first uh, try to uh, disturb or modify the input graph. Uh, and then we rerun our solver on the modified graph to get a new solution. Uh, if the new solution has better, is better than the older one, we can uh, keep the better one. So in in the like, like path following uh, style, we try to every time to modify the input graph and uh, get a new solution, and uh, we just uh, keep the best one over the routine. Uh, so this is uh, like a by level optimization. The subset, uh, the sub function is to solve the problem, whatever using the AI based solver or using the heuristic based solver. And on, on, in the outer, outer loop, we try to using reinforcement learning to modify the graph uh, to get a the better structure for, for solving. But one thing important to note is that we don't relax the real problem because in many traditional approach, we may relax the problem into the continuous space. Then we reproject the solution into a feasible one. But here we even tighten the tighten the the, relax, the, the the constraint because when we have a modified graph, we have a tightened uh, constraint that would ensure that the the new solution still uh, in the is in the feasible domain, but we uh, but interestingly we find that even we tighten the, the 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 feasible domain, maybe we can even get a better solution. And then we also find that it's very uh, applicable to different uh, problems like DAG scheduling, GED graph at a distance, and Hamilton like TSP uh, routing problems, and we can have a very significant. Uh, performance gain uh, on different tasks. And we also uh, uh, released our code. And this is our this year's work about robustness. So can we um, devise some robust, uh, like a diversity of training mechanism to improve the robust robustness of our solver? But, but, but scientifically speaking, I think this is a very tricky problem because uh, for optimization, um, um, especially for combinatorial problems, even a slight modification to the law problem, like the constraint or the the coefficients, maybe the solution can be de can departure away, right? Uh, but here we focus our problem into the area of visual graph machine, so that will be more sensible to human. Like we have two images, and we have some key points on the image. We try to find their node correspondence, but intuitively, if you only slightly Modify the pixel value of the points, or you only slightly move the peak, the key points by some pixels. You should have the still have the same solution, right? But uh, numerically, we find that 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 not the truth, especially for trained solvers. It may degenerate significantly. Even you only give a very slight disturbance. So we think this is not acceptable. So that that that's why we come up with our. Uh, idea and uh, this is an example. This is before attack, uh, two cats. This is after attack. We just only give some noise, then the solver may crash. This is another example. If we just only slightly move the key point into uh, by a few pixels, the matching can be disastrous from the accuracy here to here, only two. Uh, so we devise our adversarial training mechanism to improve the robustness of the solver, and they, we think we think at least in the visual graph matching domain that that will be useful. And even we find our adversarial training scheme can improve the overall accuracy of the solver, even all the clean data, clean data, and no no disturbance. And we our work is the, so far is the best solver. In published uh, papers in twenty in this year to until this year, 
And I think uh, this year has just uh, end up with new groups, and I don't find any even other works can surpass our performance. And also this is our this year's ICML about to try to fuse two different neural networks with the same, I mean, identical structures, and it's about model fusion. So uh, given two identical model structure, but they be they are trained by different users, and especially in the federated learning setting, because the user cannot share the data, but they can share the model, which is trained by their own data. So the problem is, can we fuse the model parameters, right? Uh, so, but even they are identical. Here, the node permutation can be random. So we assume that the node here is a, here is a correspondence, and we try to find their correspondence, which can be formulated as a graph matching problem. So another baseline is about OT fusion. So you are using optimal transport to measure the the, the distance and find the correspondence. Just, but here we're using the graph matching. So here is an ICR paper this year, which is ranked the first on the SMR open review, right? This is also about this topic. Uh, so we, we think about our uh, approach in the setting of federated learning. We have multiple users. They cannot share the data, but they can share the model. So we try to fuse multiple ne neural networks. Uh, it can be like a graph matching problem, but the problem can be more uh, more simple, to be honest, because we we have them constrained because the node can only match their correspondence on the same layer, but not cannot cross the layer. But the challenge is about the problem scale because the neural network has a tremendous large number of the nodes and the channels. So we try to uh, leverage the blockwise similarity structure of the mat affinity matrix to speed up our training and the uh, uh, matching. Also, we have some applications uh, in the downstream. First is about EDA. So this is our NURPS uh, 21 paper, which is published actually in the undergraduate thesis. Uh, and uh, we, we just uh, compare with the uh, uh, Google Nature paper about using deep reinforcement learning for uh, placement, macro placement. And then we're using IO for macro placement, but not th that's not the, 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 the story only. We also uh, you devise a deep learning based one to optimize the standard cells, which is even smaller. And then we're using the reinforcement learning and the classic algorithm to do routing. Then we get a reward function. So compared with the Google's work, they only do macro placement. Then they try to 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 train the I/O. But we have even longer and the pipeline, and we can get a better result. We have, for example, on the public ISPD dataset, we have uh, eight percentage uh, performance gain compared with Google's work. This is some uh, example. This is about the macros. We cannot visualize the micros, we can uh, the stand cells, we cannot visualize the, the routing because it's too dense. Uh, we also have this year's work, sorry, this should be 2020 uh, NIPS paper is about using a generative model to do routing. That will be uh, very, I think, different compared with the classic ones or the reinforcement learning based ones. So reinforcement learning based ones just to try to autoregressively to find the routing from point A to point B. But we treat it like an uh, image, and then we just uh, draw the image to draw the, the routine. So we do it one shot. We do not do, not do it autoregressively. So that, that's like our graph matching idea. We do it in one shot, and that can be much more efficient, at least compared with IO-based methods. Uh, but we are not efficient as efficient as the very optimized C++, uh, C++ code about routine in many industry level of uh, uh, algorithms. So, but I think it's just the beginning. We can even get better results because our current we only using the PyTorch. It's less, much less efficient than C, especially for some data loading, transforming stuffs. Um, so, uh, so I try to uh, conclude my my work. Uh, so, um, I today I talk about machine learning for combinatorial optimization, and uh, uh, so in my vision, I try to establish some more general uh, framework can handle different kinds of graph problems, different kind of constraints into our framework. That's, I think, also the main challenge about the generalization ability of the, the model. We need to encode the constraint into the architecture of the neural networks. Then we have, can have the better generalization ability. Uh, and uh, the other things about like 
we talk about foundation model, we, a big model. We try to have a, a, a more general uh, multitask learning uh, model like the ZC, ICML, DeepMind talk about. Then we can uh, switch uh, the ability to different uh, uh, problems. Uh, this also can be uh, fantastic, but uh, I think it's we can be we need to be very cautious about it because we have the keep in mind that no free lunch. Uh, if we need try to figure out very big uh, uh, universal model, maybe we uh, we have to sacrifice something about is for example the training uh, data set should be very large or the high computing overholder uh, overhead whatever. Okay, so. Um, Thanks for your listening. That's uh, the main part of the, uh, our, our, my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Yen. So let's see if there are questions from the audience. So may, maybe I can ask a question. Uh, I meant, uh, I'm, I'm always curious. So uh, when when uh, people use, uh, R, in particular in your case, when you use RL to try to solve some combinatorial op optimization, mm -hmm. Uh, how how difficult it is to generate so useful data for chaining? Right? Because in in many combinatorial problems, even finding a feasible solution is already difficult. Yes, yes. Uh, so for use the the, the EDA pro, uh, problem as an instance. So actually, we we we, we do not do pre-training. We do not to train the model on one chip and uh, test it on the <coughs> other chip. We just. Uh, 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 Execute and reinforce branding on the single chip to do training, and uh, finally we, we get the results. Uh, so I think uh, generalization ability is a big concern about uh, such IO based ones. And uh, the other thing is about uh, the the time cost. As I said, we also try to using the IO to to uh, solve the graph matching problem. And we have uh, this year an ICR paper, and uh, we can <coughs> have the close performance compared to our TPAMI paper, but the cost can be much more. Uh, higher, maybe about uh, eight times slower than our uh, one shot uh, software. Okay. So, so, so I think IO can be more uh, ready to use given whatever uh, graph problems. But one shot model, I think, uh, can be sometimes more effective. But the challenge is that how you can you encode the the constraints into your neural architecture. That's the main challenge. But for reinforced learning, the constraint can maybe can be more flexibly. Uh, handled. Oh, okay, thank you. So I see that in the audience okay. there's questions. So let's probably take the last question. I think the uh, Zhang Shizhou, uh, you can unmute yourself and. Uh, hello, I, I see your experiment about the compare to the VG, VGG 16 and uh, your, your GN master on, on your slide. And I want to, I have a question about uh, what is the sp special thinness that uh, you using your proper size method that is training slower than rest night of VGG sixteen. Ah, so so you mentioned the backbone, right? For, for uh, yeah. Uh, I I guess <coughs> the the the, the, spe, the special task. What 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 is your new your master for the special task that that is very uh better than than other traditional master? Special cost, you mean? Uh, sorry, uh, could you repeat uh, it? For example, for example, like uh, the uh, e image classifications yeah. or the object detections, there yeah. is a YOLO, yeah. YOLO V5 or yeah. some, 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 some master. And, uh, and your, you, you proposed a new master about uh, combine your DNN to do some, something. Is the task is some, it is some special or or something. Uh, you mean you you mean uh what what which which problem you mean euro for visual detection? Uh, 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 f uh my my question is uh, uh when I should use your method on 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 my task. Ah uh, okay okay so your your task is object detection right? Uh, uh, yeah. OK, OK, so yeah, this is a very interesting topic. I think if you have, I, if I had to have more time, I can uh, explain more. But here we, we try, I try to uh, give you some my own personal ideas because, you know, I, I also do very th much things about computer vision for object detection. So uh, I think for object detection, currently we just extract the features of an object into a 
vector, whatever you use the CNN or use the yeah, transformer. Yeah. But but mm. for me, I think like, like here, uh, yes, for graph matching, uh, we maybe can you can can uh, first extract some graph structure of the, the the objects. Then we can extract the features from the graphs. I think that will be maybe even better be the next generation of the uh, object representation for AI because it, I think it's more explainable compared with a vector because graph can be more explainable than graph uh, than vector. The other thing is about we know like in autom autonomous driving, many objects like cars, uh, yeah. or whatever, it's just a, like a, a rigid, rigid object. It's a dumpy, you know, rigid object, and uh, for many parts of the uh, cars can be decomposed and yeah, recomposed yeah. into a new object, new car. So I think that's the thing oh. about uh, from unseen objects to seen objects, or from seen objects to unseen objects. So I think that's the way we try to conquer the problem, problem of open set uh, recognition, because we can decompose the graph into parts. Then we can recompose the objects from these uh, separate parts into a new object. So yeah, that's interesting, think, yeah. yeah. This is my yes. personal point of view. Thank you. No, thank you. All right, thanks. So in the interest of time, uh, so so we can probably take any further questions offline. And so uh, thanks a lot, Professor Yen, again for the interesting talk. Okay, let me. Uh, okay. All right, thanks. Thank you.